Good morning, morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night Hellblazers, wherever you may be in the world right now. This is Chris Gordon on Ramblings of a Hellblazer. I hope everyone's well and staying positive, I certainly am. I would just like to take this time to say thank you so much for your continued support on my little podcast. I'm very humbled to say that I have now over a thousand plays. That's absolutely outstanding, thank you so much. I would never in my wildest dreams have thought of anything like that. Well, today on the Millhouse Mix, I am proud and more than a little excited, I must say, to bring to you someone we all know and love from Constantine. She's beautiful beyond words, with a wit and intellect that match her character. She is by no means a newcomer to the TV screens, having appeared in many TV shows, being both English and Spanish, with a main role in El Señor de los Cielos, I hope I pronounced that right, (laughs) and more recently the female in Kiss of Vengeance, playing a sexy and mysterious assassin on a personal war with a Mexican drug cartel who was responsible for her family's massacre. She's also been in the reboot of Dallas in 2014, and finally as the character we have all come to love. So, without further ado, Hellblazers Worldwide, it is my pleasure and honour to present to you the badass who's helped John Constantine on many, many occasions, the one, the only, Zed, Miss Angelica Salaya! Okay, so good morning, Miss Saleya. May I call you Angelica for the purpose of this interview, or Angie? You may call me Angie. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much. Okay, news of this interview has ignited the fires burning in the hearts of all the Hellblazers. So on behalf of them all, I would like to thank you wholeheartedly for accepting this invite and allowing me the honor of interviewing you for the fandom. Uh, Thank you. Honestly, thank you for being the voice of uh, so many fans of of Hellblazer out there and for being... Uh, such a motor to you know keep all this you know noise going and everything and for always being so active on twitter on <laughs> social media thank you oh great thank you very much i'm sure everyone would love to hear that from <laughs> from yourself <laughs> okay so i'll start with some questions here this is going to take you right back i think well hopefully not right back you're not that old uh, so that's a nice ins- <laughs> <laughs> that was a nice oh. well, hold on. i know it was my birthday but come on <laughs> Way to go, Chris. Insult her on the <laughs> Okay. When did you start your interest in acting? Or when did, you know, was it an early age that you started to uh, think you were going to go into something like this? Well, um, I've always been a weirdo. Maybe that's why I'm always like, like putting tweets out there about weirdos. Because since I was a little girl, well, I'm the youngest okay. of uh, three brothers. And I'm the only girl. And, of course, my brothers didn't want to play with me. They want to play yeah. Barbies with me or anything like that. <laughs> And and my it was funny because I, I hardly played Barbies. I was more into pretend cooking. Okay. And then I always had my own TV show. And then from there, I used to see all of these court dramas, you know, of, of like these court procedure shows. Mm-hmm. And then I would go back into my room and act out every single character in the court procedural, you know, <laughs> shows I would see. And then I, I started developing this thing of um wanting to just hang out by myself more than hang out with other kids because I felt other kids never got me and um and I always wanted to be in this make-believe world where I could be do anything and but I was I was always so real to that of like no 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 but if they cry they have to actually cry and if they're angry they have to have to get angry okay and my mother was like okay well you want to spend all this time in your bedroom go ahead, you know, just don't set me <laughs> on fire. <laughs> and, um, and, and that was, that was really me. And then in, as a teenager, I started, um, helping out in, um, in theater. And then I was really into, I started getting into theater when I started, um, I, I was really into directing the music and lighting mm-hmm. in theater because to me, lighting and music is, is everything. And, um, that sets the mood, that sets the tone. And I, it's funny, I can be without television, but I cannot be without music. Oh, yeah. And to me, music is, 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 is also something I love. I, I don't play any beautiful instruments. The only instrument I played and by ear was the viola, which is like the most weirdest <laughs> instrument that people are like, oh, violin. No, it's the viola, the, the thick older sister. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so... After that, I, I started, you know, 
within, you know, the whole directing the light and everything, I, I started getting into acting. And then from there, it was, I ended up directing <laughs> as a teenager because I, I, I'm, I have a, I'm a control freak, I guess, maybe <laughs> because I'm, I'm this type of person that I want to put like this whole vision out there. So right. I would direct my, my colleagues and then also put out like the, the music, the tone, the lighting, everything. So from head to toe, I would direct theater as a teenager because I wanted people to go in and have an experience. Okay. And then from there, I got the opportunity to go to Mexico City because Spanish is my second language. And I went to, to Mexico City to perfect my Spanish accent okay. and, um, and continue studying acting. And, and I haven't stopped since. So I guess it has been from a very early on moment of my life that I, I, I've had this ongoing passion for, for creativity and, and, and portraying true human emotion. That, that's always to me. It, it has to be true human emotion. Maybe, you know, other actors have like this other technique or goal that they want to do with their work. And for me, it, I, I always want to keep it true to where someone at home might see it and be like, yeah, I felt that. When I get someone at home saying, yeah, I felt that, or I relate to that moment particularly, that to me is, is, is my goal. Everything else, whatever, you know, producers and, and the network and production, whatever they say, it's like, ah, that's, that's something different to me. It's. It's all about someone being able to relate to that. Hello? Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Oh, that was so embarrassing. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that's, that's actually really interesting because it's... Um, what you actually can bring into a character and the fact that you really do like, you know, you, you, you those emotions that you do get to feel them and everything like that. Uh, it's amazing that you, um, when you said obviously from a younger age as well, that you were very much into that sort of, you know, looking at the court dramas and things. I did actually read recently, you wanted to be Wonder Woman when you were little as well. And I'm just going to take you back. I know we've gone a bit further. <laughs> I just want to take you back. Why Wonder Woman? Um, I mean, she's a strong female character. So I guess it was that you saw in, involved in her. Yeah, it was, it, I, I, basically, I had two superheroes as a little girl, and I had She-Ra, because her and her brothers would defend, you know, Grayskull mm -hmm. and all this, and, and, and to me, it, I had this strong bond with my brothers, and, and we've always said, like, you know, He-Man and She-Ra were the brothers were against the world, and then, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and Wonder Woman is because I, she I guess in, in some way she reminded me of my mom. My mom is, you know, when I was a little girl, of course she was this Amazonian woman, but, you know, as I grew, you know, she became shorter. But <laughs> <laughs> but my mom was, you know, this this tall, light-skinned, dark, wavy hair woman that had everything together. She was my invincible superhero, and Ooh. Wonder Woman was the most closest I, I could get and every time I saw Wonder Woman I saw my mother and I wanted to be my mother as a little girl and I still want to be my mom oh, and so. Wonder Woman to me is 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 that is is mom is home is is I've got it all under control I I it's just I I that's where I also developed my passion for portraying strong women and since day one that's that's all I've ever done. I've never played the victim. I've never played someone who life beats down and, and doesn't, you know, evolve from that. Yeah. My goal has always been to, you know, make sure that young women out there see strong women and they can look up to, you know, maybe if it's a character on TV or whatever, but I think it influences. And I think anybody, you know, any young kids in particular, whether you're a boy or a girl, but, you know, if you're, if you're being exposed to strong women, that's what you're going to want and that's what you're going to aspire to in life, you know? No, that's a great thing to be. It's a, you know, I know from speaking to uh, some of the Hellblazers who are female that you, your role as Zed uh, really inspires them to, you know, to want to take things further as well and obviously be that stronger character. And they really see that within Zed. And, myself, <laughs> and obviously when I've been looking at seeing the roles that you've already done... Um, one that sprang to mind was the Kiss of Vengeance, which I've, I, I can't admit I've personally seen yet. I'm sorry, um, but the, it seems like you're a female version of the, of the Punisher in that film. In the, <laughs> you've had your, you know, you've had your family have obviously been sadly massacred, but you, you then 
obviously go around playing assassin and get your revenge on them. So obviously that's that's a real strong character there as well. Um, and you can see that through obviously Los. I'm going to say this wrong. El Señor de los Cielos. Yes, you said yep. it right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you've been, a, you know, a long-standing character in that as well. So again, again, it's unfortunately I'm, my ignorance um, and my lack of being able to speak. I speak German. I can't speak Spanish. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've not seen that. But again, I, I presume it, it was another strong character because, like, it's quite obvious that's what you portray. Like you just, uh, you just explained there. Um, yeah, I that that character I did actually on that show um, uh-huh. really touched. I wanted to touch home as to what a a lot of um, Mexicans, Latin Americans are living right now, which is this whole war on drugs and the cartels, but one of the most dangerous countries to be a journalist is actually Mexico, and not like just this past week, they massacred uh, uh, another journalist in the middle of the city, and Mm -hmm. it's just that no no one can really portray the truth of what's going on, because it's so covered up by the government and all this stuff. And, and I wanted my character to really go after that. And my character was cool, was cool, was calm, was, you know, trying to get to the truth, to the bottom of things, doesn't matter mm-hmm. what she risked to get to that. And, and then the last moment when my, my character gets assassinated as how I, I actually, it's funny, when I found out that my character was going to be assassinated, I, yeah. I asked the, the creators to please write up my my character to be killed off as any other journalist would be killed off in real life. So okay. basically I got my nails taken out one by one, I got oh. <laughs> hair, nails, nails taken out and I got a bullet to the chest and it would actually be a little bit more gruesome in that in, in re- the real world. I would yeah. probably, it, it, I would probably have some limbs cut off, mm-hmm. but <laughs> <laughs> um, it was network television. So we got to keep it a, a little bit clean there. Yeah, that's fair um, enough. So it, even to the last moment of, of my character saying, okay, this is the end, this is the end, this, I'm, I'm really going to die now. I died with my head held high and, and, and telling him to, you know, bugger off <laughs> in, in, in a very Mexican way and, yeah. and um, with my head held high. And it's funny because even to this day, that's everybody's favorite scene. They're like, oh, my God, you died with so much balls. I'm like, hell yeah, <laughs> I died with more balls than any other man died on that show. <laughs> Well, that's the way to be. I've, <laughs> you've kind of, uh, yeah, I've, you've spoiled the ending now, so I shouldn't have asked that question. So. <laughs> but I know I'm going to watch the movie and I'm going to know all the way through to the end what happens there. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. That's okay. I don't mind. Uh, I will watch it, though, I promise. Uh, it sounds like a really good movie. Um, and obviously, the fact that you're in it makes it better. Um, and seeing that portrayal there would be fantastic. So, And, and that, death, that death scene you've... Uh, elaborated on i'm glad i haven't had my tea yet (laughs) but yeah no that sounds great okay um moving on in preparing for this interview uh, as you are aware i have consulted all the hellblazers to ensure they've had an opportunity to ask their own questions to yourself and if we'll move on to those questions now and i'm going to ensure i put the names of those who asked them and where they're located because Again, as you are aware, with the time zone differences that we've had uh, in trying to arrange this, that Hellblazers are not inhibited by geographical boundaries. <laughs> so, I'll okay. St- okay, so I'll start with oh, these, the first couple, I think, of mine as well. What drew you into the character of Zed and the Constantine show in general? Um, what drew me in was, again, it's this strong woman who is extremely sarcastic and has lived on her own, running away from her own family, from her own, from her own life, and wanting to create her own reality, her own destiny. And, um, and again, I, I go back to the kind of characters I like to portray. And okay. I love that, that she's a badass. I love that she doesn't take no for an answer. And, you know, and she was always on Constantine's toes and, and keeping him on point. And, and that's something that really drew me in. I mean, the moment that... I, I, you know, I, I started, you know, casting with with Matt. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just it, it was it was just that we both put up like this whole thing of like, no, I'm going to push you. No, I'm going to push you. No, I'm going <laughs> to push you. Not one of us let each other be like pushed. So we were just yeah. like fighting, you know. But like <laughs> in the scene of like, like yeah, you're not going to take me into a corner. Hold on, and, and that was like 
damn, this is going to be so much fun. This is cool. going to be so cool to do. You do seem to have such a great um, chemistry, uh, everyone on set, everyone on the whole show just seem to have a brilliant chemistry like that. So it looks really, really good. Yeah, um, we, we all, honestly, I mean, working with, with Matt, working with Harold, working with Charles, it's, they're so, they're like family. They're honestly true team players, and we all thought about the project, not about ourselves as individuals, and we cared for each other and took care of each other during, you know, any scenes that we had to do, and, I mean, we're there, even if we're not, you know, on camera, even though if someone's getting their close-up, we're there, we're standing for them and, and being extremely respectful to one another because we we all got there through our own merits and yeah. and each one's creativity, and that has to be respected all the way. Yeah, definitely. It sounds really, really, really cool. It's just endearing the show more to everybody, I think, is the fact that that, you know, that went on and that sort of camaraderie and family, um, family sort of bonding yeah. that you had. Uh, your characters portrayed differently to the comic. Was that a conscious decision to create your own role, to make it your own? I had to. I, I couldn't keep her... I wanted to, honestly, I did want to make her a little bit more sarcastic and, and sexual yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because the comic is extremely sexual. And, and I was headed down that way. And then as we saw, you know, Corrigan started to play in. And, and um, so I had to keep that a little bit hidden. Mm -hmm. But I, I couldn't portray Zed as 100% as it is in the comic books because I wouldn't do her justice. I, I think it would have been such a you know going back to the comic books and trying to compare each thing i did to you know something fresh and you know zed became latina and yeah. zed became you know from where she's feeling a lot to where she's kicking ass to where she doesn't want to speak to anybody mm -hmm. and then she just crumbles to the floor in you know in one episode <laughs> <laughs> so it, i just i really i wanted to give her my own twist my own little creative twist okay cool and it, it definitely worked because uh zed is the character as well in the show is absolutely fascinating and you can see the torment obviously the hidden past everything there uh but the, the it's not bullish it's the um the strength and the determination of zed that that shines through so it's a fantastic portrayal that you've done of it thank you <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> okay this question now comes from kim in philadelphia if you okay. could change anything in an episode of Constantine that you were in, what would it be? Why and how? Oh, oh, that's a good question, Kim. Um, if I could change anything, what would it be? I think, and, and this is my own thing. Um, okay. I wouldn't have let Gary Lester touch me for a second time, already knowing how much you know, I got from him yeah. and, 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 and how much he drained me and, and, and how I felt, you know, all shooken up. Mm -hmm. I would have not let him do that to me. I would have gotten so close to him. And, and, and if you guys notice, up until this episode, my arms are pretty, you know, I, I have them closed up with my jacket. I'm not really getting anyone close to my skin because I don't want no one touching me. Yeah. And the second time around, when Gary gets, you know, his energy to keep going out, granted, he goes out for for the um, hunger demon, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. I, I guess I would have, the only thing I would have changed is to make that, you know, more into Zed being able to say, you know what, fine, I know this is what you're going to do, but a little bit made it more conscious as to, you know, Zed saying, I'll let you drain me of my energy yeah. to go and, 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 and do what you need to do to make amends, you know, mm -hmm. um, make amends. It would be to, and you know, when the first contact came and Gary took all this energy from, from Zed and she felt, you know, all of his heroin addiction and all this would be to actually also show because she is also clairvoyant and to show that she saw his intentions yeah. of the future of going after the hunger demon. And I would have liked to tie that in a little bit more, you know, just to make her more, I guess not such of a klutz. Okay. And not so well, you know, putting herself out there, exposing herself because she doesn't expose herself that much more after that. She's like, nope, you a lot of touchy touchy. Nope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, no, that's that's a really interesting answer actually, and yeah, it kind of makes sense when you explain it like that because yeah, Zed is a very very 
she isolates herself. Yeah, you, you're thinking back when you've just mentioned that. Yeah, you do. You isolate, or well, Zed isolates herself um, from being put in that sort of situation. So yeah, that's a really good answer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to the next one, which is a question by Amber Surratt in Michigan. What does Zed feel towards John, and how would a relationship work between the two of you? Hinting on the romance side that you've mentioned already. <laughs> <laughs> Zed and John. Um, Zed is infatuated by John, and he is... Remember, Zed has this thing of her father figure of not having such a close father figure. I mean, he's been a little too close as in, you know, trying to make her, you know, be the leader and and, and Messiah of this cult that he has going on, but that we know in the comic books. Um, I think John is the first man that she meets that is, even though he's so screwed up, even though he has all these demons he's dealing with, he is the most protective and honest man she's met. Even though she played, her, he played her off, and you know when they first met, and, and he, you know, duped her. It, it, something about that yeah. that he wanted to protect her and keep her away from harm is what drew her even more, you know, into that. Even when she got, you know, affected by the fallen angel's heart, yeah. you know, he still did everything to protect her. And all these things that John pushes Zed away, Zed pushes in because she knows she's. He's protecting her, and, and I, I think the fans saw a lot of chemistry on screen as to where Zed really wanted more, but, you know, John, with all of his demons, didn't want to push in, and we saw that in the last episode when, you know, Jim goes for it, Jim goes for the kiss, and he's <laughs> there, and John sees it, and, and Zed is just, she's a little devastated because she... She really wished that was John and not Jim. Yeah, yeah. The the, the chemistry was definitely visible um, from the people watching. Uh, and I think it would have been. I I mean, honestly, with the clairvoyance and 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 someone with all these spells, that household would have been a little messy. <laughs> <laughs> you would have been having little hell babies. <laughs> hell babies everywhere. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Uh, so the next question is also from Amber. And it kind of touches, I think you've already touched on the fact, so I kind of know where the answer to this is leading, is did you read any of the Hellblazer comics to learn more about the character? And what if so, what did you like most about that Zed character in the comics? That's the first thing I did. I read um, Original Sins Uh and The Devil You Know. Those were the first two books given to me. And Original Sins, I mean, that's where I started seeing... Zed and her whole, you know, cult base and, and how she gets down with John too. Yeah. And um yeah, um I what drew me in is the first thing I got from reading uh How Blazer was really her sassiness, her sassiness and her sarcasm, which I had to bring on screen. If I didn't touch on being sassy and sarcastic and you know giving attitude, mm-hmm. that's one trait that you cannot take away from Zed. You cannot, you know, not do it. That's something you have to bring to play because let's, you know, that's, that's who she is. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's good to know that you did read the, read the comics first. Uh, Yes. (laughs) (laughs) There's some quite out there. I mean, I'm not even going to mention the film. Um, that's some (laughs) people obviously don't. No, 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 no. (laughs) Funny thing is that, uh, the week prior to Mm -hmm. actually, you know, going in for the role and getting it, I, I just kept, it kept coming on. Like, it just kept coming on TV, and it's just like, <laughs> what is this? Like, I know this was out here years ago, but yeah. what? And I'm seeing it, I'm like, I don't, and then I'm like, and then I get, you know, to go in to read and for a I'm like, really? Is this what they're doing? And then I and then I started reading what we were really going to do, and then I started reading the scripts, and I'm like, hell no, this has nothing to do, and then I read the comics, and I'm like, what the hell happened with the movie? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, the, I think the movie is just uh, in, in the fandom world is just something we don't really mention much. <laughs> it's artistic interpretation, and leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, in, yeah. Artistic interpretation. Very, very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, do you reckon this is from Ross in Spain? Did John's mum put Zed in John's way to save him? Do you think? That's that's a very good question, because. Zed is a sensitive, and she did have contact with 
with his with his mom. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a that's a very good question. Oh my god, he <laughs> he he actually discovered something. I I think I think it's not only the mother. I think it also has to do with destiny and it has to do with with protection and 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 it has to do with there's there's certain things that have to happen in their own world that have to come to pass yeah fate i think there's there's two lives that come together and they 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 just had to they had to it wasn't it wasn't a coincidence it wasn't you know something that just happened i mean he was in zed's head for such a long time and she thought she was going crazy could have been you know his mom maybe maybe yeah, I know she's he, he's in uh, Zed's head for a very long time because I just love the end of that first episode where we just get your introduction and your room is just absolutely adorned with pictures of uh, Constantine everywhere. Uh, How you're, did you're, you're, obsessed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, I'd say that was obsession, but <laughs> but that was just like whoa! It's you know, it came to the end of that episode and suddenly it focused on you just busy scribbling away. It was like whoa, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, there's definitely, I think it's like a fate, it's like a cosmic fate, I think, bring, has to bring those two together um, yes. um, to, to work on, so that's really cool. Okay, uh, where am I now? <laughs> if From Tracy in Scotland, uh, who's the Hellblazer DJ, if you haven't seen, um, I'm putting the oh. mixes together. Uh, oh. she's, she puts great music mixes together on the, uh, on the podcast, so... Uh, sure, she'll be asking you for your music soon. <laughs> so, <laughs> this one is uh, within the Hellblazer comic. Which issue would you like to see most, from paper to screen? Of of course, I. I well, we saw a little bit of you know the which was the last episode. Yeah. Uh, which I I really enjoyed because that was when we started seeing Zed coming in and and I actually have it hear my hand right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, 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 I don't know. Because I, I know the guys have their favorites and the guys want to do like their own thing and all that. But I, yeah. they, they, I have to, I have to just say from a girl's point of view, well, yeah, I mean, Zed and John have to shag and Zed has to walk away. And say, Thank you. Bye. I got what I wanted. Bye. I got to show that because, I mean, honestly, what have we seen out there with the comics that, you know, and on screen that, you know, the girl, she kicks ass, you know, mm-hmm. she, she helps him fight demons, yeah. she pops into the shower with him, gets her own business going, and then she walks <laughs> away and says, thank you, goodbye. You know, that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's badass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a that's a really good, <laughs> good answer as well. Fair enough. Um, I'm just pretty sure no one would complain about seeing any of that in ah! <laughs> from either side, from yours or Matt's. But, but, but it's the whole thing. It's not just the shagging. It's the her walking into the shower, getting her thing, and, and then, then saying thank you, goodbye, and then walking away, yeah. and then continue fighting. And it's like, and she's like, yeah, no, it doesn't matter. This is exactly what I do. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So yeah. Don't don't get attached. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that would have been worked really well, especially that would have fitted really well with Zed as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Um, oh, you've put me off now. <laughs> okay. So, if there, if this is from Carissa in Canada, if you were to have a soundtrack based on your life, what songs would it be on, or what what would be on that soundtrack? Oh my! What would be on that soundtrack? That's pretty. I, I'm, I'm always listening to music. There would definitely be... I'm a huge Beatles fan. Like, huge. Oh, cool. I went to Rishikesh in India to go see where, you know, they, they came up with this marvelous music in the White Album. And yep. um, there would be lots of that. There would be lots of Led Zeppelin. Mm-hmm. If, of course, you guys see my Led Zeppelin t-shirt that I hardly ever take off because I just... <laughs> You know, maybe it's the hair thing. I don't. I'm not sure. Maybe I see myself identify with that. Um, and there would be lots of. I, I'm just. I don't get identified. Like, there's not one song that identifies me. There's just genres of music and lots of Ella Fitzgerald and Billie Holiday and and it's 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 anything that 
is bluesy in between old and new and and ooh, what songs in particular that's that's a tough one that's the real tough one maybe right now the only one that comes into my head right now is that anytime I hear it I have to stop and it, it gets me yeah is uh, wild horses from the Rolling Stones because okay. it's Southwestern rock and roll, and I grew up in the southwest of the United States, so it's yeah. very cowboyish. And and that song, it's there. That one and um, "Free Bird" by uh, Leonard Skinner, and um, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had a chance to come over? Um, about the Beatles, I I'm very very lucky where I live. I literally live forty minute drive from Liverpool. Uh, so I've walked down the cavern. I've drunk in the cavern club. <laughs> I've quite a few times. I've crawled out of the cavern club afterwards as well. <laughs> uh, have you ever had a chance to get over and, and sort of experience Liverpool at all? Not to Liverpool. I've been to London a couple yeah. of times there, and uh, I always find myself smoking um, smoking a, a beautiful pipe down in St James Place and uh, just hanging out there and and uh, going down to Camden and and. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've actually, I've done lots of clothes shopping by there because it's a lot of like punk rock and, and, and a lot of stuff that we don't see over here. So I end up taking a lot of like key pieces that, that I mix with other stuff, you know, maybe some other, you know, extremely fashionable clothing that we see, but I like mixing a lot of stuff. So I like going down there just to get, you know, uh, ideas as of outfit wise, because, well, I like that too. I like expressing myself through clothes and, um, but, uh. But yeah, I, I I have to go back. I have to go back when it's not cold. I always end up there <laughs> when it's freezing. <laughs> I have to go and experience uh, when when you know when it's when I can be without a heavy coat. Yeah, that's pretty much never. <laughs> that's never. But I mean, there's there's I, I mean, compared to January, February, the, you know, December, there's yeah. other months where you know it's it's not as you're being thrown into the North Pole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty grim uh, <laughs> winter here. But I, I love it, though. I, I, I must say that, you know, it. I guess a lot of my... It's funny. I, I grew up in the southwest United States, but a lot of my music, a lot of my taste in music comes from, you know, your, your country because yeah. I, you know, Corinne Bailey Ray, and then I go back to Rolling Stones and the Beatles, and then I mm. go into, you know, well, Amy Winehouse and... And um, and and the subways and, and all these other crazy oh. bats that I, I I hear out there and to me it's like you guys get this you guys get music I don't know what is in the air I don't know what's in the soil I don't know what it is but you guys get music and influence yeah. everybody else so cool congrats congrats <laughs> for having, you know that there. <laughs> Uh, I've got to say, there are some, I think, from the 60s, 70s, well, even, I say all the way through, there's just a certain beat, like you say, there's just something about the British music scene, um, which it does, it inspires other people uh, to move on there. I will say, though, if you ever come over to Liverpool and that sort of area, then I'll be more than more than happy uh, to show you around places <laughs> and take well, you to the cavern. And then we'll go to the cavern club and then we'll crawl out drunk. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a good plan. <laughs> All right, cool. I'll move on to a question from Blaze the Bruja, who's in Russia. Okay. Uh, Zed always thinks, acts, and works outside the box, creating her own rules. Are you that kind of person in real life? Now, I think we've sort of touched on this earlier, so um, it should be quite an easy um, question. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, in some, it's funny. In some parts of my life, I'm very, I'm very old school. I'm very old fashioned. I, I go by certain rules as of like rules of respect and stuff like that, that I grew up with, you know, mm -hmm. with parents who are very, very traditional Mexican. So this whole okay. thing about certain conduct is really enforced since you're a little kid. And it's all about respect towards mm -hmm. elder or towards authority. Well, I'm not sure about authority, but, <laughs> elder, <yeah. laughs> um, but other than that, no, I, I've, I've always walked to the beat of my own drum. I've always thought outside the box. I've always liked making other people think outside the box. Yeah. I, if one of the things that I do for my friends and the people I love is I make sure they always, you know, 
see other options and think in other areas that they maybe they haven't thought before because mm -hmm. it just it opens up options and I think that's the key to life is not always seeing what we're expected to see and not always do what we're expected to do but yeah give it our own twist and think of maybe new ways. I mean, the ways exist. Everything exists. It's just that, you know, maybe we haven't thought about it yet. Okay. And, yeah. That's really quite cool. Uh, and I hear what you say about respect as well and respecting the elders. It seems to be something which sadly is lost in, in a lot of society across everywhere. There just doesn't seem to be that respect anymore that you can... Um, I'm, I'm talking. Oh, no, so I'm, I'm 39. It, it, I'm old. So. <laughs> oh no! I, I mean, I can I can talk to my mom a certain way, and 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 it's funny in English. I can say, "Oh, you ho, oh you bitch." Yeah. But we say it with lots of love. But in Spanish, <laughs> no way. Oh no 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 no! I can feel anytime I disrespect, it, like if I feel that that's coming on to disrespect anybody that's older than me, yeah. I do see like my mom's really big hand with the slap coming towards me and it's like <laughs> no i'm not going there it's just it's something that was you know it's, it's implanted and yeah. there's something you just have to you have to just respect and other than that i i i yeah i do my own thing and i have my own beliefs fair enough that sounds a great way to live okay the um, last fan question is from tj who i'm sure you've seen quite actively on twitter as well Yes, and he would like to say, ask, how would you feel about a fan base pro based, sorry, a fan base based project for you to be Zed once more, and would you return again for the Hellblazers to be Gubbin Zed? If you, could. I will. If the opportunity comes to portray Zed again, I would do it in a heartbeat. I, I, I didn't get everything I wanted to do out of my system. I, I wanted to do so much more. There's so much stories I wanted to touch base on. And if, you know, and the Hellblazers know out there that I was really hyped up to, you know, dyeing my hair and then yeah. getting bald and doing all these, you know, <laughs> physical transformations that go on with Zed. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I, I want to do that so bad because it's not only the physical transformation, it's her emotional transformations of everything that's going on with her family, with, you know, losing yeah. hope, which, you know, and, 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 and being hurt by her family. And, and some way she tries to find that inner strength. And I think that's a storyline I, I, would, I would really love to, for it to come to life. But also, I, I you know, I, I think the, the little bit that was left out there, you know, I, of course, to... Mm -hmm. A lot of us, it wasn't enough, but I think we, we we did it justice. And I think that at least, you know, with the 13 episodes that we put out there, we beat the crap out of whatever was done on film a long time ago. <laughs> I'll vouch for that, and I'm sure there are th <laughs> thousands of Hellblazers all screaming, hell yeah, <laughs> when they come back and hear this. No, that, you're, you're right. I mean, it would be absolutely amazing if, you know, obviously we can get Constantine renewed for season two. But I think the, the you've left a legacy of 13 episodes, um, which are always going to be there. And from my point of view, and I'm speaking, I mean, I'm in the chat rooms daily, so I know this is coming from everyone, is that those 13 episodes were absolutely amazing. And there's more and more people getting drawn in each time because they've been, re, you know, they've been replayed everywhere. New people are coming in, they're seeing Matt, uh, people at convent, you know, comic cons, they're seeing pictures everywhere of you, of Harold, of Matt, of Charlie. And everyone's just like, well, what's all this about? And, and there's a huge fan base and it's growing and growing. And for a 13 episode season to have that much support, it's going to go down in history. History is, I think, is a cult classic. If it doesn't get renewed, it'll, you know, it's definitely being a cult classic. And I think if it does get renewed, it's going to be an even bigger cult classic. I'm, I'm making sure, yeah, you know, that's how sort of the feeling is. I think within the fandom, it's it's just a it's a huge show and so so much potential um, to still be got. Like you just, you know, you've just said for, for development of Zed and everything. I think honestly, it, I and I think I can speak for like the rest of the cast is. It's really humbling and it's beautiful to see so many fans out there still supporting, you know, all the Hellblazers out there still supporting Constantine and the new fans coming on board. And it, it is every single time, and that's why I agree to do this interview, is because every single time I go on social media mm -hmm. and I see new fans and I see new things putting out there and all these, all this creativity to express the love, you know, that you guys have for Constantine, it's, yep. it's amazing. It honestly is. And 
it only makes us, for me in particular, it makes me that much happier and, and satisfied with what we did with 13 episodes. And that meant that all the stuff that we went through, everything, you know, the, the late night calls going home <laughs> in the morning, yeah. sweating bullets through, you know, trench coats and Ooh. leather jackets and high boots and <laughs> scarves and sweaters in, in August in the middle of Atlanta with oh, 90% percent <laughs> Jesus. All this stuff, all this lack of sleep, being in... in in, in conferences and, and, and doing interviews with maybe 40 minutes of sleep within, I don't know, 30 some hours. Yeah, oh my God. All that was worth it. All that was worth it. And I can say for myself and, and everybody else that we would do it again in a heartbeat because it was so much fun. And I think, I think it shows out there and with all the fans just, you know, coming together, it, it, you guys are the best. Honestly, you guys are the best. That's really, really sweet. Were you surprised with this last two questions from me before I wrap it? Were you actually surprised with the support from the show that you've got from the fans? I mean, you've hinted at it all there. Was it a surprise to see how, how much love there is for the show and for you guys as, um, as the actors in there and the characters? Honestly, yes. I mean, I'm, I'm, I come from a world of, of uh, Spanish, you know, television and all that. And yeah, there's, there's supporters out there and there's supporters all over the world and out there. But and they've always talked about like you know the characters and the, the normal fan base, and then and then this happens, and it's the comic book fan base, and then yeah. it's you know the Hellblazers, the Hellblazers, and that just took me for a whirlwind because you guys are passionate, you guys are like a hundred percent there, rock and roll, hell yeah, <laughs> and I'm like these are my people, <laughs> I feel like I'm I'm a part of something really cool, and. Yeah, it took me it took me for a surprise. Of course, when you get get onto a project, you don't think it's going to have the impact it has. And I'm not saying about television wise. I'm not saying about you know production network yeah. wise. I'm saying about fan base. That's what I'm talking about because at the end of the day, you know, everything ends. At the end of the day, everything you know gets renewed or canceled or taken on by another show. That's what happens. That's the yeah. reality of television. But the fans. They, they they stay. The, the true fans stay and and they're not one, two or three. It's you know, you guys are, are awesome and you guys are a lot and it's it's awesome. It's cool. it's really cool. Well, I've got to say from a personal experience as well, and if you were to join any of the group chats that I'm part of about for the fandom, you will see it from everybody just how much it means to us. Um that you yourself, for example, is so interactive. Uh, a simple favourite uh, of one of our tweets or one of our or a retweet or a reply, you should see what that does to everybody. We're just so happy uh, and so excited to receive that from yourself. It's like, oh my god, you know, she's, the interaction that you do um, has really sort of drawn everybody as well towards towards you, towards you, um, and and think and realizing how much you must you really care about those fans. It's very obvious from seeing that. And as I say, um, everyone I've speak, spoken to is. All you can see is, oh my god, I got a favourite from Angelica. You know, <laughs> I'm I'm like that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's, to see that kind of interaction coming back, it is just absolutely fantastic, and and it shows through the whole of this interview that we've had that you've got that real love for your fans, um, and obviously th- you're as active and vocal in in the support of the fans. And affection as hellblazers. I mean, I saw the other day as well. Someone's even created you a My Little Pony Z. Uh, that's just yeah, awesome. I, 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 my heart melted. I'm like, oh my god, I want to get this in like an actual, you know, an action figure of of My Little Pony Z. That, <laughs> that was, was my little toy. You know, I grew up in the '80s, so yeah, I grew up with My Little Ponies. And then I saw it. I'm like, oh my god, I felt like crying. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. I mean, I'm say I grew up in the '80s as well. I mean, my little song was My Little Pony or Skinny and Bony. My Little Pony is yeah! something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i remember those tunes very well uh i actually got um, i collect one six figures as well and i had one made of matt as constantine um specially made for me and you're on the list as next along uh-huh. with uh, <laughs> along with um <laughs> along with harold as uh manny as well so <clears throat> when i've got the money i'll be getting <laughs> i'll be making them <laughs> to put on the shelf as well <laughs> It's really, really cool. Honestly, all the stuff that's put out there by the fans and all, you know, the, the gifs and, and yeah. you know, quotes and, and pictures and comments, drawings, all that. But believe it or not, I mean, the fans got to know that every single thing that's put out there, 
I see and I save. So I have this little special folder <laughs> that I put everything that you guys draw and, and I put it all there because it, it, it means a lot to me because, listen, a lot of fans out there draw, take enormous amount of time with detail drawing, you know, certain things and, 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 and I, I, I respect that. I respect that and I know, you know, you guys can draw, I don't know, any other, you know, character out there, but you decide to draw, you know, Zach. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I just want you guys to know that I, I'm really appreciative of that. And, uh, and I, I got you guys' back. <laughs> oh, that's really sweet. And I'm sure it's going to warm the hearts of everyone to hear that. Uh, who's out there now? Okay, so Angie, um, once again, this draws us to a close for the interview. All I can say is I thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing me this opportunity to bring the Hellblazers the interview and for taking time to speak with me. It's been my absolute honour and privilege to talk to you and it's something I'm going to remember for a long, long time. Chris, thank you so much for this interview and for reminding me every single week of you know, what's going on and everything. <laughs> And with the time difference and everything, and thank you for your family also for 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 being there supportive too, and and for the Hellblazer family. Honestly, it's you you guys rock on. You guys are so badass, and and I'm I'm here for you guys. Oh, that's lovely to hear. Thank you very much, Angelica. Okay, so I'll sign off from Angelica now. Thank you very much, Hellblazers. Uh, I'll speak to you soon. Well, Hellblazers, I hope you enjoyed listening as much as I did in recording that. There is nothing further I can say except stay tuned to the ramblings of a Hellblazer with myself, Chris Gordon. Look me up on Twitter, at ChrisGordon1975. Keep fighting the fight to revive Constantine. It's getting closer. We're going to do it. And stay safe wherever you are. This is Chris Gordon on Ramblings of a Hellblazer, signing out. Thank you very much. <laughs>